up on this great conversation we just had here on the future of Africa and working with the SDGs and making the economy uh, greener and, and, and stronger in Africa. We have somebody here with us as a guest who's intimately familiar with the reality on the ground in West Africa. Uh, and you're doing some wonderful and incredible work there. Mawusi Christina Guizin, is that fairly correctly pronounced? Gisson. Gisson. Yes. Thank you. Uh, you're the co-founder and CEO of Summer Life. COO. COO. <laughs> COO of Summer Life. Uh, and it's an agri-tech company that is creating transparency and traceability in the Shea business. And not everybody might know what Shea is. So let's just kickstart that when I'll, I'll, and, and we'll continue. What, what, what is Shea? Thank you so much. Uh, it's good to be here. So Share is a, a bat, it's a nut that is used for food largely in the global market. So when you eat chocolate, uh, there's share in it. When you eat biscuit, there's some share in it and margarine as well. Uh, so 90% of share, which is the butter, goes into food. Mm -hmm. And the 10% goes into cosmetics and pharmaceutical companies. Wonderful. I use, I use share every day in my margarine. <laughs> I use it in my hair products. I mm -hmm. use it in my body lotion. Yes. And of course, since palm oil has been very problematic, I assume mm -hmm. the share business has been... A good substitute for yes, that. Yes, it's a great substitute. So, um, millions of women farmers are involved in the share production in West Africa, and of course, they uh, provide necessary materials for a multi-billion industry. Yes. Um, and yet, many of them live in poverty. Yeah, many of them earn less than two dollars a, a day, day. Yes, which is it's, it's really really little. So, your organization, Summer Life. Uh, you work to increase uh, the income of these rural women and, and producers in West Africa. Uh, you do it through innovative financing, uh, market access, access, and also agroforestry. Yes. And this is really, really impressive. Um, and you have been named one of the Schwab, Schwab Foundation's new social entrepreneurs and innovators of the year. So congratulations for that. Thank you so much. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a big achievement, of course. So. Um, Tell us a bit about your background and how summer life, life came to, uh, summer life came to life. Yeah. I like that. So, summer life, uh, I grew up in the northern part of Ghana, uh -huh. uh, particularly the upper west region where we have share. And as a little girl, I was helping my family by going to the market to sell water um, after school hours to support my family with their income. So, during this time, I will meet the women who walk about 30 kilometers each way mm -hmm. to the market to sell their produce and they end up with little to no profit mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So sometimes when I sit with them, they will talk about the challenges they are facing and they will say, okay, some of you are the ones going to school. Once you come out, come and save us. So that lived with me. And so I decided to take my studies very seriously and I got the opportunity to also work with some development organizations, including GIZ, um, where I was in charge of supporting women with market uh, certification and training. And so during the, that time, it opened my eyes to the problems within the various value chains. And mm -hmm. my attention was on the share value chain. I realized that these women, uh, will carry their produce and make no profit. So for them, the best option was to cut down the trees to make some quick income. So they'll cut down the trees for charcoal uh -huh. to make some quick income for their basic needs, uh, which is understandable if you, if you ask me. But then it is also leading to deforestation. And the same shared tree is competing with cocoa in the mm -hmm. market. So cocoa butter, when cocoa is expensive, share becomes, um, should I say, the celebrity of the day because it saves the food industry. So I was wondering, why then is the women not getting their worth from the, this uh, quality or should I say high-valued high commodity? So uh, I decided to start Summer Life, basically ensuring that we digitize the operations of the women because they are fragmented, they are undigitized, uh -huh. and the kind of buyers who also need them wants to also report on their environments and social impacts because their government now is requiring them and also their customers are also asking questions about where are you getting your raw materials, where are you getting this and that. So we thought, okay, this is where we can, uh, that's a sweet spot, we can create value for them by digitizing these women and present them with impact data. And then as a result of that, they will pay premium for, to these women to improve their livelihood. And that's how uh, we started. 
this is truly impressive work you're doing. And just to think that you carried this encouragement from, from the women with you all throughout your studies. Yes. That's, that's quite something, huh? <laughs> so um, in our last session here, that was before you, you sat down with me, uh, we were discussing the United Nations Sustainability Goals. Yeah. And um, I know that they figure the, the SDGs are very prevalent and very strong in, in, your, in your mission of your, of your company. Huh? Yeah. So tell us about the SDGs and how you address them and also how you incorporate them in, in your work and your organization, please. Thank you. So. Uh, our main mission is to eradicate poverty. So mm. we are working to eradicate poverty, especially among smallholder farmers, women. So I'm a bit, uh, when I say women, it sounds like I'm being a bit biased, but because the share value chain is led by women, it's known as women business because of the, the chores, or should I say the processing, it mm. looks like household chores, carrying and, mm -hmm. and hitting and it's not value. grinding. Yes, mm -hmm. it looks like something a man will not typically do over there. So it is a woman's uh, value chain, or it's led by women. So we are working to improve their income. That's the SDG that we are interested in, no poverty. Uh -huh. We are also interested in gender equality. Mm -hmm. These women are the ones making the magic happen. But when you look at them, living on $2 daily with a household of an average of five people, mm. that is totally unfair. Mm. So for us, we want to get to a level where these women have enough income for themselves, take care of their basic needs, and be able to even save something for the raining days or when there's emergency. And they, have, they will be able to make decisions for themselves and be at nobody's mercy. Uh, and that's the kind of work we are work, uh, that's what we are working towards. So we are interested in gender equality, uh, and also environment, uh, climate action. So, like I mentioned, shared trees, um, they sequester carbon mm -hmm. a lot, and compared to uh, other uh, trees like, uh, should I say, uh, bamboo, uh -huh. or even uh, uh, the moringa tree. So you have... You, you, we are better off keeping shea trees alive than cutting them for charcoal. And harvesting the, 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 sh the shea nuts. Yes. Keeping, keeping the trees. Uh, exactly. Yeah. A typical shea tree, the ones that are naturally regenerated, will take 20 years to grow. Mm -hmm. And once they grow, they will fruit for 100 years. Wow. So look at the generations that this can feed, right? Mm -hmm. So for us, we are working to make sure that the 16 million women who depend on this tree, they have their livelihood sustained, like you mentioned, to harvest continually for 100 years. And then, climate-wise, we are mitigating the crisis by making sure that the women are resilient. So we have agroforestry as well that we do where the women are encouraged to plant trees within their farmlands, ah. right? So it's also part of the things we do. We also train them to raise new shared trees or seedlings and transplant them. And then uh, we have been working towards training them to be able to maybe put this on the ma uh, carbon market so that that Ooh. becomes an, an, extra, an, sorry, extra. an extra source ah. of income for them. So this is what we are doing. So these are the three main SDGs we are interested in, uh, no poverty, gender equality, and climate action. How many, when you say we, how many are you in your organization? <laughs> we are over 100 now. I ah. mean, uh, those uh, employees, people on payroll, we are over 100. Mm -hmm. uh, for the women, we have over 100,000 women in our network right now, and 40,000 of them were connected to markets where they've earned more than 21% extra income above the local market prices. That's, that's beautiful. Thank really, you. Really, really. It's, it's moving to hear your story. Thanks so um, much. Have you talked? Have you been in contact with the women at the market that inspired you to, to stay focused throughout school and to achieve what you achieved? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm intentionally COO uh -huh. because I want to be very close to the women. That's what I, because I, I, in my mind, <laughs> so you were CEO. So chief yeah, officer yeah. <laughs> means that I am closer to the women. Uh -huh. uh, I'm making sure that they, what the impact should look on the ground in my head or mm -hmm. in the minds of our team is actually on the ground when you go there. So it's not just by words. So I'm intentionally there so that I can keep that contact. So whenever I'm uh, back in Ghana, I visit the field to uh, get new insights, let them know uh, we are here for them. If there are new problems that we could solve in the value chain, they have to prompt us so that we can be uh, innovative or mm. evolve as well, yes. Mm.
Terrific. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, about the Schwab uh, Foundation Awards. Uh, uh, they highlight individuals employing innovative market-based approaches to directly address social issues. That's, uh, that's a quote here. Uh, so what do you see from your perspective as the significance of addressing these um, market-based approaches? Uh, for me, uh, using market-based approach to solving social problems mm -hmm. means that we are not dependent on philanthropic uh -huh. um, generosity, mm -hmm. which we are not sure could be there forever. No. Uh, Leave tomorrow. Anything could happen. Uh, there could be recession. There could be anything. And you don't want people to keep waiting, hoping that a savior will come out from somewhere and save them, right? Mm. And that means putting these women at the mercy of other people's uh, generosity. And that's unfair. So using market-based approach means that I am going to, we are, Summer Life is working to create value for the foreign market or the export markets to unlock certain premium for the women to be able to improve their own livelihoods. So with or without Summer Life, these women are empowered to continue this business. Uh, whatever could happen, something could happen that Summer mm. Life is no more there mm -hmm. and philanthropies are also no more there, but these women have something to live on um, every day. Mm. So for, for people watching this uh, all over the world, how can they make sure that when they purchase products with Shea in them, um, mm -hmm. first of all, should they buy more products with Shea in them? And, mm -hmm. and how could they make sure that these products are fairly sourced uh, and that the people all throughout the value chain, all the way down to the women picking them and, and bringing them to the market are, are fairly compensated? Yeah, I think that, like I said in my incident, that we saw that these food manufacturers have new demands from customers. We, we know that bef before, buyers were not making, were not questioning source of the, the food they are eating. Now we have that. Mm -hmm. We have people questioning, where are you getting this from? Who made it? Mm -hmm. what, what is the impact on the environment? So the, U, uh, the EUDR is a good policy, if you ask me, to make sure that some of these tree crops uh, and the farmers who produce them get their fair share. So I would say that the market or final consumers should keep asking questions, demand for more, and be also willing to pay because mm -hmm. <laughs> I understand that uh, it, beats, it, it brings this financial burden on these companies. So if con consumers are asking questions and they are, uh, they are willing to pay for the cost of getting these, mm -hmm. uh, these across, like environmental and social impact, across or throughout the value chain, I'm sure that uh, the women that we work with will also get their fair share. Mm -hmm. And they, as uh, customers, will be making the world a better place for everyone. Excellent. So how about certification? I mean, there are some some products that, for instance, um, one of the bigger um, entities here at the body shop, they've been using a lot of uh, certifications of their, their nut products, for instance, including Shea, I think. Yeah. So, so how, how, what is your take on the, do we need certification? How do we make sure that the cert certification is valid? And, and what kind of, do you have any certification on, on, on the products that come from Summer Life? Yes, so part of the, we have organic certification, uh -huh. which we, we, we are yet to renew, you know, organic certification is so oh, It was a gust of wind, no <laughs> worries. You didn't do anything. <laughs> So organic certification is renewable annually, so we, we are yet to renew again. And I feel that uh, it, usually the organic certification they have, or the certification they have quite stringent uh, mm -hmm. requirements mm -hmm. that for a local producer, it becomes, a bit, it, it overburdens the local producer or the woman. Overburdens them. Overburdens uh -huh, because it's uh -huh. expensive and also uh, time consuming, mm -hmm. right? So for me, I feel it's, it's a good thing, but the, the measures in place should be a bit flexible and easy to uh, navigate, because you need a consultant to actually take you through all the requirements and what they mean on the ground, right? Because they are this, these are very, uh, should I say, <coughs> sophisticated uh, steps or booklet that you have to go through it and understand how you can put that on the ground before the external uh, certifier comes in and take you. Mm. So I feel 
they are okay, they are good, they help with verification and building trust and transparency. However, the, the requirements have to be a bit flexible and plain for the farmer side. I'm sure for the, for the international market side or the buyer side, they understand them easily mm. because they will, they will certify as importers. But for us, we have to certify as producers. Ah. And for producers, that's where the, the challenge is, like what I'm mentioning with the mm. requirement and the steps. So next time I buy a hair conditioner with, with Shea in, what, what, is there anything I can look for? Is there any way that where I can find Summer Life in, in the label? Uh, no, 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 because we sell to B2B, so yes, we do B2B. I, I figured, I figured. So they will rather put their own label. But I'm sure if you go into details, where do you get it from? They should be able to tell you that maybe I got it from Summer Life. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Well, that would be terrific to know. <laughs> you know, Soma in Swedish with an R at the end means summer. Oh, I see. So, so it's, it's, when I first read it, it sounds like it's a Swedish name. But <laughs> so, so what does it mean, the Soma? Soma is a Dagari word. So uh -huh. Dagari is a language spoken in the Upper West region. And it means help me, Soma. Uh -huh. So help me. And life is English life. So we are helping yeah, yeah. lives. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> that beautiful. Mean. So it's been terrific having this conversation with you. Before, before we leave here, um, what can you say about your experience here as a young African leader uh, in your field coming to Davos? What, what, is it, what does it give you? What do you think you primarily bring to Bright Devils? For me, it's very clear. Uh, it's, it's power and empowerment, and it's just um, showing that you can really bring something with you from, from early on and, and make it into a legacy. But from your perspective, how would you, how would you define your visit here? I think it's interesting to, to be here. Mm -hmm. This is my first time. And usually when I think about the forum, I, I thought it's just business people, like business as usual uh -huh. people meeting. And you end up outside of an Arctic base camp. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Business as usual people meeting to, to, to discuss just pure trade uh -huh. and nothing about social impact. But to my surprise, there are quite some social innovators around that I've met who are doing great stuff. So it's good to know I'm not alone. Uh, there are quite a number of people who are usually following the same path uh, like me mm -hmm. and are committed to it and also seeing that the other people like the Schwab Foundation working to make sure that there's visibility for social impact of social innovators and also fin financing as well, so pushing for funding for that sector as well. Well, it's, it's been terrific conversation, having a conversation with you and, and I'm really going to look out for the summer life and maybe ask some of my Purdue, well, the brands I use if they're using your products. Um, very inspiring. Best thank of luck, you. and thank you again for joining us. Thanks and for to all of us viewing, viewing this, uh, Shea, Shea for the world and, and uh, empowerment of, of the, the people really producing the, uh, the, these, uh, these products, it's, it's crucial. So if you want to interact uh, with this story that's been told, you can go to We Don't Have Time to our app and uh, read more about Summer Life. And uh, now let's move on. Thank you. Thank you so much.